So in this first part of our, our lesson um, for machine learning on GPU, we're going to be asking the question, is a GPU available? Um, because obviously, if we don't have a GPU, then uh, pretty much everything else is, uh, is fairly moot. So the motivating questions for this part of the lecture are, how do I find out if a GPU is available? Um, if there is a GPU available, how do I determine its specifications? Because as we saw in the introduction, not all GPUs are the same. And then once we know what kind of GPU is available, how do we actually select to use that GPU with our code rather than just using the CPU? So the objectives in this part of the lesson are to use Python to list the GPUs that are available to us, um, to be able to identify the characteristics of those available GPUs. And then because we're going to be continuing on from the introduction to machine learning uh, lesson, we want to be able to select a GPU using the PyTorch library, um, which is what you use to build your neural network in the introduction to machine learning. So the first thing we need to do is to find out if a GPU is available. And there's a bunch of different ways to do this in Python. Um, one of my favorite libraries is the GPUtil library. It's the general Python library. It's got nothing to do with PyTorch. Um, and it will just uh, give you a list of all of the available GPUs um, and you can extract various uh, other information using it. Um, but for the purposes of this tutorial, because we're using PyTorch, we're going to use the equivalent function from the Torch library. So in terms of comparing GPUtil and PyTorch, the GPUtil get available um, function will give us a list of available GPUs. Um, the PyTorch um, function CUDA is available will give us a true or false Boolean. Um, and we'll see how we can expand on that information um, in a couple of steps. So at this point, because you've finished the introduction to machine learning lesson, you should have a Kaggle notebook that completes all of the steps in the, the intro to, to ML uh, lesson. And it should look something like this, probably not identical, but something like this. Um, it should import your data. It should create a data frame, um, do some nice data cleaning, um, extract out exactly which piece of the data you want to do your machine learning on. So select your features. Um, it's just some plots showing the difference between those, those different pieces of data. Um, it should create a test train split. So separating out our training and our validation data. It should normalize the data so it's suitable for feeding into a machine learning algorithm. And then the first algorithm that you used in the intro to ML tutorial was the random forest. So you should also have been able to run your data through a random forest and got an accuracy, something along the lines of this one here. Um, but it's only at this point that we really start to get interested in the GPU because this is where the neural network part of the introduction to ML section starts. Now, for what we're going to do in this section of the lesson, we really don't need anything much more than this very first bit that says import torch. So wherever in your um, code you have imported PyTorch, that's where we're going to start this part of the lesson. So if I'm just going to run this cell in my notebook, and I'm going to add a new cell below it. So at this point, I have imported the PyTorch library. I haven't really done anything else. And I'm simply going to ask PyTorch is CUDA. CUDA um, is used as a proxy for GPU in, uh, in PyTorch because PyTorch is a, um, uses the CUDA framework to access the GPU. And I'm just setting a variable use CUDA which is equivalent to the PyTorch CUDA library is available function. So if I just hit go in that line of code, we've, we've run this function and hopefully at this point, we should be able to see that use CUDA has been set to true, which is what we'd hope it would be because over here we have the accelerator enabled as the GPU. If for some reason you've come up with use CUDA equals false, then you should check that you have the accelerator enabled for your Kaggle notebook. 
Now, once we've uh, established that we have a GPU available, the next thing we really want to know is, you know, what kind of GPU is it? Because this doesn't tell us much. It just tells us, um, just tells us uh, that there's something there. So we might want to know um, what kind of GPU is it? So in this case, we could use the Torch CUDA library and then, oops, get device name. So if we run this cell, here we go. So in this case, we can see that the GPU that's available to us is the Tesla P100 um, with 16 gigabytes of memory. Um, and you'll see that the P100 is one of the GPUs that we have listed in the introduction. Um, now, for some, um, for some online uh, notebook providers like Co Google Colab, and I would guess for Kaggle as well, um, you don't always get the same GPU when you run your notebook. So it is actually worth checking that, um, that you, uh, you end up with a GPU that you can use. Now, there's a whole bunch of other information that we could also add. So I'm just going to add one more row of code in here. And I'm going to take, I'm going to be lazy and just copy the code from the tutorial, pop it into this cell. OK. Um, and let's run that. OK. So this is giving us a whole bunch of information. Um, it's telling us, so firstly, we're only going to run this if there's a GPU present. So if use CUDA had been set to false, we would just get back nothing here. So first thing we're asking for is what kind of CUDA is this device capable of running? Like every other language available or every other framework, of course, there are different versions of CUDA. Um, and some devices are compatible with different um, different version numbers. So we have to be a little bit careful never actually been caught out by using a device that doesn't have the right version of CUDA. If you're using a very, very old computing system, you might want to be careful with this. Um, actually, when I say very, very old, in terms of GPU, very, very old, anything pre-2015, you might want to double check your, uh, your CUDA versions. The second thing we're asking for is the device count, i.e. How, how many GPUs do we have? Um, and in this case, it's nice and simple. We only have one. Um, so one CUDA device. We've already seen its device name. We have a P100 PCIe 16 gigabytes of memory uh, uh, NVIDIA GPU. Um, and we can also return approximately the device memory, which is showing up as about 17 gigabytes, which is slightly more than we'd expect for our 16 gigabytes. Um, memory on the, the P100. But as we'll see um, in one of the later steps in this lesson, when we actually talk about memory on GPUs, it's quite a complicated subject. So even though I've printed it out here, I wouldn't actually use this number for anything particularly. So at this point, you might be asking yourself, well, you know, this is really cool. I can get all of this information on my GPU directly in my Jupyter notebook. Can I not do the same for my CPU? Uh, and of course, the, the answer is yes. So if we just add another little cell down here, um, I'm just going to use the platform library, which fortunately is a pretty standard library. And I'm going to ask um, the notebook to print the name of the processor. And there we go. There's our CPU. We have a 64-bit x86 CPU. Um, so now we know exactly what's available to us, which is really great. So at this point, we know that we've got a, um, a P100 GPU available. Um, and we know that PyTorch can see it because when we, when we query the uh, torch.cuda is available function, it returns true. Um, but we also need to tell PyTorch to use it. Um, and to tell PyTorch to use the GPU, we need to set the PyTorch device to, to be the GPU. Um, so there are a couple of steps to this. The simplest way of doing this is to specify our device 
as PyTorch device, so torch.device. Nice, just like that, um, as CUDA. Now, this is fine because we know that use CUDA equals true, but when we run a notebook or if we have it as a .py file, we don't want to have to you know, manually check that every time. So in fact, it's best to write this as CUDA if use CUDA is true, else set it to the CPU. And so this is a very general purpose line of code that we can, um, we can put into any piece of uh, software that sets the device appropriately, because if there is no GPU available, i.e. if use CUDA equals false, it will just set our PyTorch device to be the CPU, which is will still work very nicely. So um, let's just check. So we have printed the name of the device is CUDA here. Now, one thing to be careful about is that our device is not just the string CUDA. It is torch.device CUDA. So it's it's a function uh, within the PyTorch library. Um, and I'll emphasize why that's important in the, the next step of the lesson. But at this point, we've, we've set our device. Now, if we were in the very fortunate situation of having a machine with multiple GPUs, um, in which case our torch.cuda.device count would have returned a number greater than one, we can specify exactly which GPU we want to use by indexing this number. So for example, if we wanted to use the third GPU, remembering that Python is a zero indexed language, we would put CUDA colon two. Now, in this case, we only have the one. So in fact, the only option that's available to us is CUDA zero. If we just rerun that again, we'll see that our device is now set correctly. So at this point, you should have um, if you've replicated all of the steps in this part of the lesson, you will have told your PyTorch neural network to set the torch.device to the first GPU, first and only GPU, um, by using CUDA.0. Um, and this is where we'll, we'll move on to the next part of the lesson, but hopefully the key points that you've taken away um, from this section are firstly that a GPU needs to be available for you to use it, um, and secondly, you should generally check what kind of GPU you, are, you actually have available to your code, because not all GPUs are the same. Right, I shall see you in the next section.